What if we group all the kilograms what where if you strip out there you can change it? What if all you had was just a shirt you had on your back, pants and shoes, that's all you got? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about today, that's being homeless, because being homeless right now is the homeless rate is going up dramatically. And a couple of reasons why is because of the recession that happened back in 06. And it's not always drug abuse what people think when they see homeless people outside the liquor store or um, the downtown Fullerton. It's not always about drugs. And I will explain that and how some homeless people, you know, you, you don't really see it. I've seen it a couple times. Some homeless people still try to give back whatever girl they have. You don't have one. Now, one of the reasons that I said that caused the that caused homelessness homelessness to go up was a recession. The recession ended back in 06. That affected a lot of people. The house rent went up. It affected my family, including because we were about to lose our house, but we I don't know how much it is, but we still ended up in the house. And the recession affected a lot, like I like I said before. Pizza house rent, right? jobs being lost, according to uh, the national. Home. Population for the homeless, 6 million jobs were lost. An estimated 40% 40, 40 of families were facing eviction, and 7 million households living on very low incomes. That, that says a lot. Because before the recession, we were all doing pretty good. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good, but we were all still maintaining. But after that, it just affected all, a lot of families, a lot of households, as you can tell. 40% of families facing eviction. That's a lot of families about to lose houses. Other reasons, like I stated, it's not always drug abuse. Other reasons why homeless people have gone have gone homeless is because of passive loved ones, job loss, domestic violence, divorce, or family disputes. This is all according to fam to homemade America. Now, this is a lot of stuff that can take a lot of place into you being homeless. As you can see right here, this is basically everything I just stated right now. And abuse at home is one that I didn't state, but a lot of teenagers, there's a, there's a handful of teenagers that are homeless outside now. And that's what it is. They just, they're just tired of being beat up at home. They don't get a lot of support at home. And it affects them in a lot of ways, so that just makes them want to leave the house. And lastly, like I stated before, there's always a, there's always very time you see a homeless guy get back a little bit. And it's nice seeing the city get back. I know in Santa Ana where I grew up, uh, Civic Center at Ross, this is where we have all the homeless people go. And at least once a month, I forget the name of this fam, but they cater everything, they bring everything for the homeless people. All these homeless people, they stay right across the street. If you drive by any time of the day, you just see a load of homeless people right here just laying out right there. They're everywhere right there. And that's just one spot in Santa Ana. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more in your full tank because you're seeing a lot more homeless people where you wouldn't expect to see. And it's just taking a, a huge effect on them. And it's good to see the city get back to them because, you know, we all made mistakes, but they can't turn back anymore. They lost everything. And while they don't have much to show, I have this, I have this video that, I, that explains how I see it sometimes how uh, homeless people get back. I work at Target, so I see a lot of them outside. And I'm outside most of the time in my, my job position. And I see some of them get back, you know, they don't take a dollar. Sometimes they should. They should keep the dollar, actually. But sometimes they give it back. And that's really that's really cool to see for me. And here's one video.
All right, Sergio, I like the rhetorical questions at the beginning, and uh, you've got kind of a negative visualization. So you identify the subject, you've got uh, some statistical information that you're presenting. You don't really give a, a source on that early statistic, but that wasn't a, a big deal. Later on, I thought you were providing uh, some other information. I know what the general topic is. I don't know exactly where you're going with it. At the end of the speech, it almost sounds like a persuasive presentation. Uh, rather than an informative presentation, and I think that that goal needs to be clearer at the beginning. There's not a very dis um, descriptive preview of what the contents are, and I think you need to do that uh, more effectively also. Uh, the presentation factors visually, uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with the fact that you're kind of behind the demo station the whole time. I know that you want to be back there to be able to control the visuals and uh, the video when you when you get to it, but when you're not doing those things, I think you need to step forward a little bit and make yourself a part of the speech instead of kind of putting yourself off to the side. I think uh, your gestures are okay. Your facial expression, sometimes you, you come across, uh, I, I tell you what, you come across sympathetic, I think, frequently. I do think you could be a little bit more demonstrative. Um, but you, you seem like you've got kind of a quiet demeanor uh, typically, so I think it fits with the kind of person that you are. And I, I don't think people should pretend to be something that they aren't. Uh, I heard in your voice, for instance, uh, a good de degree of sympathy, and I thought that that was pretty effective. I do think sometimes the voice could project a little bit more, and maybe you could have a little bit more inflection here and there. Um, the pacing gets hurt a little bit when you get to the video, obviously. I think you probably recognize that because you start skipping ahead. And you, you kind of have stepped out of the speech and you're trying to let that do the speaking for you. And I think that's a little bit problematic. Maybe some uh, additional preparation of the video, even some editing of it into a couple of parts might have worked well. 
Um, there's, you know, and the, and the little piano music in the background doesn't uh, speed things up either. It, you know, makes it sound even slower than it really is, uh, what we're watching. So that's a little bit problematic. Uh, I'd be a little hesitant about the that's all, thank you, exit line. I have, there's nothing wrong with the thank you per se. A lot of, I have a lot of colleagues who go the opposite direction. They think that the uh, audience ought to be offering their approval, their thank you by the applause, and it's not really necessary for the speaker because they're the one who's really offering something to the audience to say thank you. I don't have an objection to somebody saying thank you. I just think that you want to be more effective when you finish off and leave us with that you know, image, especially an emotional image that you're trying to get across there. and that you step on that a little bit when you get to the that's all folks exit.